This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, the other day, my missus said to me, not in an inquisitorial, but more in a sort of a curious way, really, um, why do you need all of these guitars then? And I started to explain about the difference between single coil pickups and humbuckers, set neck versus bolt on, strats versus telecasters versus Les Pauls, and all that sort of stuff. And I could see the eyes glazing over. I'm sure we've all had that experience. You know, it's a bit like when she tries to explain the difference to me between you know Dolce and Chanel or Gabbana Saint Laurent or whatever it is. You know, um, basically whichever handbag she's uh, she's using this week. Anyway, um, you know. It did get me thinking about what are the essential guitars for, you know, kind of classic rock and blues rock. So I'll tell you what, here's a little bit of a solo with me kind of running through a few of the options. And as always, you'll find a full tab for that solo in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it and a jam track for you to play along with for yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address and the link is in the description. $3 or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these additional resources that go along with these YouTube videos. And while we're talking about the housekeeping side of things, all the guitar tones there were courtesy of the Marshall DSL-1 combo. And for the high gain stuff, I was just... Uh, throwing the where is it um uh i can't find the picture i was throwing the new x horseman pedal in front of the uh in front of the amp just to kind of tip it over the edge a little bit anyway um as you saw there i was using a number of different guitars and for me the essential guitars for blues rock and classic rock break down kind of like this something stratty Okay, this is my choice of something Stratty, the Sire Larry Carlton S7. I've done a bunch of videos on this guitar in the past one quite recently, so I'm not going to rehash uh, what's going on with this, but a brief summary. You've got roasted maple neck, bone nut, locking tuners. I like the HSS uh, pickup layout, uh, but they do a three single coil version if that's more your kind of thing. 
And, um, yeah, I mean, if you're into blues rock or classic rock, then a Strat-style guitar is going to eventually, at some point, be something you're going to kind of want to check out. Because, you know, I mean, Hendrix, Clapton, Knopfler, Gilmore, you know, the, I mean, the list goes on. Rory Gallagher, the list goes on of, you know, Strat-style kind of players um, that in that um, classic rock, blues rock sort of genre. Um this is, I paid, I think, 429 quid for this about 18 months ago. It's a little bit more expensive now, uh, knocking up towards about 500 quid. But, you know, even that, for, the, for what you're getting uh, for this guitar, you know, in, in terms of what a guitar it is, it's it's really hard to beat. Um, superb playability. This feels much like a, like a two grand guitar. Uh, just the rolled fretboard edges and everything um, if you've never played one but you've heard all the hype about these guitars then believe the hype frankly they are fantastic guitars to play uh, punching well above their weight uh, best strat style guitar i've ever owned of course it does all the, the usual sort of strat stuff it'll do that sort of um, hendrixy neck pickup thing <laughs> Go on to the middle pickup, and it's not a setting I would uh, I used to use a lot back in the days when I was like a more of a kind of died in the wall strap player, wouldn't play anything else for a long time. I never used to use the middle pickup much, but I've since found that it's it's kind of the secret to getting that uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of thing going on. <laughs> That kind of thing. Any deficiencies in, in the sound of that there were down to me, not the guitar, by the way. And then, you know, of course, the in-between settings, the famous kind of so-called out-of-phase uh, sound. Um, I, I, you, you've got, obviously, on a strike, you've got two of those uh, sounds. You've got the, the neck and middle pickup and the bridge and middle pickup. It's always the bridge and middle that I always used to favour for that. And even with the humbucker in the bridge, because on this guitar it splits the bridge pickup in that position, uh, it gives a really authentic, you know, sort of dire straight kind of sound like this. <laughs> Does the job, doesn't it? So this, the Sire Larry Carlton S7, is my choice of guitar for the something stratty category. Something telly-ish. Yeah, no, some guitars, like I'm thinking of high-end PRSs and Sirs and Tom Andersons and all that kind of, um, all that kind of boutique stuff, their exercises in everything a git an electric guitar can be. Whereas a Telecaster or a T-style guitar for me is everything an electric guitar needs to be and nothing more, okay? There's something primal and visceral about a Telecaster-style guitar and, and I think that's why it appeals to me. Simple guitar for a simple bloke, basically. Um, and this is my current favourite of the breed, the Faisley Outlaw Series Coyote Plus. Full disclosure here, I didn't pay for this guitar. As many of you know, I was sent this guitar as uh, a loaner, basically to do a review by Bax Music, who owned the Faisley brand. And I was so impressed with it that I said, uh, send me the bill because you're not getting this one back. Very, very generously, they said, actually, you can have it on us. But please, trust me here, that isn't influencing what I'm going to say about uh, this guitar, what I have said about this guitar. I would have been more than happy, would still be more than happy to pay the full street price of about 150 50 quid uh, to be the custodian of one of these. I've since done a few upgrades to it, mainly the pickups. Um, put some tone riders in and some CTS pots, mainly because I enjoy tinkering with guitars and I was curious about tone rider pickups. But the stock pickups that come in this guitar, they are absolutely fantastic. I did a shootout between uh, the, the stock version of this guitar before I modded it and that Fender Nashville Tele you can see on the wall behind me there. And just straight out the box, you know, uh, this guitar give a very good, good account of itself. Um, if you're into 
kind of blues rock or classic rock, then at some point you're going to want to get yourself a Telecaster style guitar, because I mean the, the roster of players who um, you know have used one of these to great effect over the years. You know, Roy Buchanan springs to mind, Wilco Johnson, Albert Collins, you know, and um, you know, well, it's hard, it's difficult really to think of a player who hasn't picked up a T style guitar at some point, and this one. Now, it's even though, as I say, I've got that fender on the wall there, this is the one that I tend to reach for whenever I want that sort of Telecaster tone. Bridge pickup. Well, let's run, run through a few sounds here. I'll, I'll do the bridge pickup first. It's got that real kind of um, clanky railroad spike Telecaster sound, like this. <laughs> forgot where my fingers were going there but you know it's got that real kind of hooligan kind of tone to it and then just by moving the pickup selector forward onto the uh, middle setting you've got that beautiful kind of sweet country tone And neck pickup, well, I think it's the law, isn't it, that whenever you uh, flip to the neck pickup on a Telecaster, you're supposed to play this. Etc. Etc. Um, so, yeah. Um, I do love a Telecaster style guitar for all the reasons um, I've mentioned, and this is my current uh, choice for that particular variety of guitar. Next. A single cut. Yep, a single cut. Uh, this is mine. This is my Les Paul tribute. The entry level, the uh, the kind of cheapest guitar I think you can get that actually says, uh, the cheapest Les Paul you can get that actually has the word Gibson on it. Um, I've owned many single cut style guitars, both Gibsons. I've had three Gibsons, this being the third one, and um, a bunch of like countless others, you know, Epiphones, Tanglewoods, Vintages, Harley Bentons. The Harley Benton SC552, now there was a nice guitar. Um, I only got rid of it because, you know, this had uh, sort of entered my life and uh, didn't really need the, 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 the uh, Harley Benton anymore, but that was a great guitar um, if you're on a budget. Um, and um yeah i've had this sort of on off relationship with les pauls over the years i would get one and it would be my favorite guitar for about a month and then once the novelty factor had worn off it would sort of work its way to the back of the pack and um you know i realized six months had gone by and i'd not picked it up so it would it would kind of leave the building uh but this one's going nowhere i'm going to do a follow-up video on this because i've had this one a little while now um you know, I've got this back in, I think it was about April or thereabouts uh, last year. And um, so I'll do like a follow-up long-term view video on this at some point. Um, but it's just everything I need in Les Paul. As soon as I picked this up and, and kind of uh, played it and thought, oh yeah, hello, I've got a good one here. Uh, just that thing that you can't quite define or put your finger on that uh, made me think, yeah. It's got... A, a one or two little cosmetic flaws but then again it's a gibson you know so um you got to kind of price that in really if if you're going to kind of have and it to me it's it's you know it's a fantastic guitar and i don't really care about the odd little blemish um let's have a listen to some tones uh starting with a bridge pickup uh which sounds like this <laughs> If you're picking up a Les Paul at some point, you've got to chuck a bit of gain on, haven't you? So I'm just going to kick on the uh, the new X Horseman pedal uh, for some more shouty kind of stuff. Yeah. 
yeah, it just makes me want to kind of launch into every one of the tiny number of Gary Mulicks that I've got. And, you know, I mean, as I said, all of these guitars are, or guitars of this style are things that at some point you're going to um, want to get your hands on if you're into blues rock or classic rock. And, you know, Gary Moo there I've just mentioned, um, you know, I mean, he was um, a big champion of the Les Paul. You know, you've got Joe Bonamassa. You've got, you know, pretty much, again, much like Telecaster style guitars, it's, um, it's difficult to kind of find a list of people who play in that sort of genre that haven't played one of these and uh, this this is mine and this one is very definitely a keeper so let's see what's next something with p90s yes so something with p90s um in case you don't know and i'm sure you do but there's bound to be somebody who'll ask a p90 is a single coil pickup but it's got the fatness and girth of a humbucker um so you're getting that kind of single coil kind of twang but with a bit more beef behind it um and once again you know the number of uh, players who've used the p90 guitar well you know, everyone from West Montgomery to Tony Iommi on the early Sabbath sort of stuff. Um, you know, via, of course, you know, people like Leslie West and uh, Robbie Krieger, Pete Townsend, uh, who else? Billy Joe Armstrong. The list does literally go on and on. Um, it's because it's got that sort of clarity of a single coil, uh, but with the guts of a humbucker, it really does kind of give you the best of both worlds. Uh, this is... Um, one of the two P90 guitars that I've got. This is an indie shape model. And uh, you can see in the corner back there, I've got a Harley Benton CST24 with P90s. Um, that's a lovely guitar as well. The only reason that one didn't make the cut for this video is because it needs restringing. And um, I didn't have time to restring it. So um, let's have a listen to some P90 tones, starting with the bridge pickup on this guitar, which sounds like this. <laughs> really got that kind of single coil twang but it's just got that that beefiness there of a humbucker and um you know it's a tone that when you when you need a p90 tone absolutely nothing else will do and um yeah i'm really having fun a lot of fun with this guitar this indie i bought it off a student and it's uh it's a really nice guitar uh so there you go something with p90s next a thin line semi. Yes, back to the Sire Larry Carlton brand again for this last guitar. This is the Sire Larry Carlton H7. Uh, essentially, as you can probably tell, a copy of a Gibson 335. Um, nothing unusual about a guitar being cop a, a copy, but you know, how often is it that somebody who is absolutely synonymous, like Larry Carlton is, with a particular instrument, the Gibson 335, ends up endorsing a copy of that guitar? And there is actual you know footage on youtube of him playing this very guitar in this color actually as well uh, on youtube so you know well worth checking out um so what i'm saying is if a company is going to produce a copy of a gibson 335 and put larry carlton's name on it then they've got to have got something right and dear me they really have with this guitar it's absolutely magical um in terms of the tone that you get out of out of a 335 um in all honesty it's you know in a blindfold test you might be um you know struggling scratching your head a little bit to think is that a 335 or is it a les paul because they they're, they're both in the same sort of ballpark but a 335 because it's got you know fresh air essentially there and there you know it's just a solid center block um you know it it, it does have a slightly more airy kind of quality what i find with this style of guitar is because it, it resonates and sustains um because you know it's it's semi hollow uh, more than a solid bodied guitar you can get a similar amount of sustain for less gain uh with this style of guitar uh, let's have a listen to some of the tones it'll produce uh starting as always with the bridge pickup mm. 
You can hear how responsive it is there. When you kind of pick hard, you get that sort of bitey, um, you know, kind of overdriven tone. But I was kind of going into some sort of, you know, just kind of picking softly in it, and it really kind of cleans up. It's a very, very, um, you know, kind of tactile and responsive guitar in that way. This and um, you know, I, I absolutely love playing it. I don't play it as often as I as I should. Really, every time I pick it up, I think I should play this guitar more often. So I'm going to uh, make a New Year's resolution to kind of pick this guitar up a little bit more often. Fantastic guitar. I mean, the list of players who played like Thin Line Semis. Um, you know, I mean, Eric Clapton when he was in Cream, and you got BB King, and you know who else? Um, Larry Carlton. Obviously, there's another one. So plenty of players have, have used this style of guitar to great effect. And if you are, as I say, um, you know, in that kind of classic rock or blues rock genre, then at some point it's a tone that you're going to want to emulate. So there you go. Those are what I think are possibly the five most essential types of guitar for classic rock and blues rock. Make of it what you will. Um, that's pretty much the video for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you haven't already done so, why not drop me a like while you're at it? Don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5pm UK time, where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars. Great way to kick off the weekend. I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now. Thank you.